I'm Andrea Pasqua. I cur I'm currently a third year PhD student at uh, Polytechnic Torino, Italy. Uh, currently, I'm visiting uh, the University of Sheffield uh, in Sheffield, UK. Um, my subject uh, subject area is uh, Davis flow, how to model them, uh, uh, how to carry out uh, numerical analysis of them. Um, we can say that uh, the most of uh, the research uh, I'm carrying out is about um, how to join two different, how to merge two different approaches to study the flow, especially 2D and 3D models. Um, I hope you enjoy this uh, presentation. I do my best to be as much as clear uh, as I can. Okay. So uh, as we're saying, uh, uh, this is a presentation about a new method for simulating uh, debris flow with a multi-scale approach. Uh, Dr. Alessandro Nardi and uh, I have developed uh, this method at Polytechnic Torino. Recently, Dr. Renardi moved to Sheffield University, University of Sheffield, and he keeps working with me from there. I want to start by showing you a recording of the debris flow in Swiss in 2005. As you can see in this video, one of the most important characteristics of the debris flow is that there are big coarse boulders that tend to accumulate at the front. The second key aspect uh, of the big flows is that uh, although the slope is not very steep, uh, the boulders tend to flow at high speed. The combination of these two factors uh, and the absence of perimetry signals uh, make the evacuation of local population hard to achieve. And thus, uh, uh, the big flows are, uh, particular, uh, are particularly hazardous. This figure shows an event in Swiss uh, in 2005 in the ends, in the Alps. The event uh, caused no casualties, but you can see the general destruction due to the flow. I'm sure you can appreciate that uh, the, infrastructure, the infrastructure in the valley was interrupted by the event. In Europe, to avoid these damages uh, in areas prone to the flow, local authorities, authorities uh, install mitigation structures, which usually are barriers. I will now address uh, how to design uh, these barriers. Uh, numerical models uh, can be used to design uh, barriers rationally. That average uh, continuum models uh, are the most widely employed to study the flows. In this slide, uh, you can see a typical realization of the average model. They simplify the debris flow by considering the depth average velocity of the flow along the, 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 the direction perpendicular to the flow itself. Therefore, uh, the number of variables involved uh, is, in, is uh, drastically reduced. Um, so Davis flow, uh, excuse me, that average models uh, are based on two fundamental hypotheses. First, uh, topography is smooth. So not sudden topography, topography variations are present. Second, the velocity is aligned to the flowing direction. So the velocity in the vertical direction can be neglected. The key issue here is uh, if an obstacle or the value we are trying to design uh, is in the flow path, uh, the two hypotheses uh, of this method uh, are no longer met. The obstacle or the barrier uh, is a sudden variation of topography, which causes uh, vertical deviation of the flow. Let's now have a look uh, to alternative to the average models. Dr. Leonardi has developed uh, over many years a method to study the flow structure interaction rationally. A 3D method based on three independent solvers. In blue and orange, a debris flow is represented. Uh, the debris flow is divided into two fractions. The solid fraction is represented in orange and it is solved with DEM. DEM study the boulders as spherical particles. Uh, DEM fits, uh, can, we can say that the DEM is uh, suitable for this scenario because uh, they can um, study very well the friction behavior, segregation, and so on. The final part is mixed and homogenized with a liquid fraction which is solved by the 3D lattice method. 
the lattice block, the lattice block method uh, is uh, mm, quite a recent uh, flu solver, and it is easy to cope with uh, uh, the EM. If a body is present uh, and it is necessary to, st to study the structural response, uh, the finite element method uh, is employed. I will now show you some uh, application of these models. In this slide, uh, you can see three applications of the models. On the left, uh, there is an application with only the solid component of the debris flows. It shows uh, the interaction of a uh, dry flow, which is made only of particles, and a rack dam. The second application is on the bottom right, uh, showing only the fluid part of the flow. The flow interacts with the uh, array of buffers. On the top right, uh, both uh, the solid fraction and liquid fraction component uh, interact with the uh, flexible body. The body is permeable to fluid uh, while the solid fraction is blocked by the body. So let's go back to the case of Brianza. After the Debris Law event, uh, some barriers were installed to protect the settlement in the valley. In particular, some flexible barriers and a massive check dam were installed. The problem here is to how to apply the three model to study this case. It, is, it isn't easy because uh, if you want to study this event, uh, you need to simulate a whole mountain, which is uh, the entire mountain. The main issue is that the 3D model, to be precise, needs a very fine grid. In this uh, layer domain, it would require massive computational resources. To address this issue, we have uh, come up with a strategy. We take the domain and simulate debris flows with that average model, um, which are very convenient in this case because they can solve uh, large domains very quickly. But when the, the flow approaches the barrier, flow structure interaction is studied and adjusted in these areas with a 3D model. So that average models can simulate a full scale and very efficient. At the same time, the 3D model studies only the flow structure interaction. These strategies merge the pros of that average and 3D models. Therefore, we are studying the possible advantage, advantages of this coupling. For the depth average models, uh, inserting a singularity like a barrier is much more convenient than using an uh, ad hoc numerical solution. For 3D models, uh, it is convenient to be surrounded by depth average models because it is, uh, this is a much more realistic uh, boundary condition than the solid walls. The challenge uh, is to find the correct coupling uh, algorithm. The coupling, first of all, the coupling should be two-way. While it is easy to couple 3D and that average uh, models because you only need to that average velocities, the other way around is much more difficult because with a uh, few information, a whole 3D profile must be rebuilt. Second, that average and 3D models are based on different constitutive models. Hence, uh, we need to find an equivalent theology for both the depth average and 3D model. Finally, the 3D model can simulate particles, uh, while uh, depth average models are continuum only. You can see here how we envisioned our coping. We take the whole domain, which is mostly simulated by depth average model, and extrude a small area containing the obstacle. This area is solved through the 3D model. When the flow enters uh, the, 3D, the 3D domain, we apply what we call a coupling section. This is where we transform the depth average variables into a 3D version. The two models are based on different grids. The depth average model employs a light 2D grid in contrast, the 3D model employs a much heavier, heavier 3D grid. So, at the coupling session, we must perform some operations. 
The first one uh, is an interpolation to convert uh, uh, the velocity held uh, on the 2D triangle grid uh, into velocity on point of a 3D grid. A second operation uh, is uh, to transform the average velocity field uh, into full 3D velocity profiles. It is easy to convert 3D velocity profiles into the average velocity because you only need to you only need an integration but it is much more challenging to do the other way around so um, we need to know a velocity profile which is unknown in advance and the velocity profile is a function of theology so we need to talk about uh, theology we employ the MOI theology, uh, which has been developed for uh, dry ground flows. Nowadays, uh, it exists in both uh, depth average and 3D framework. In the depth average case, uh, MU is a function of the flow number, while in the 3D framework, MU is a function of the so called inertia number. I prefer not to spend much time on details, but uh, I'm sure you can appreciate the similarities between the formulations. Indeed, it is possible to transform from the parameter of one version to the parameters of the other version. And some ideology is consistent in both frameworks. Okay. With that said, the main issue now is to convert the that average uh, velocities into 3D velocity profiles. If uh, we use the depth average model and assume that the flow is on a semi-constant slope, the velocity is constant, and the flow is uh, in a statistic condition, the MO ideology provides uh, an analytical solution. This solution uh, is uh, the one on this slide. As you can see, the velocity is a function of the flow depth. So this is an actual 3D profile. It is not essential to understand every single time equation, just uh, take note that it is a function of the flow depth. If uh, we start from a depth average model, we can integrate uh, uh, the velocity to obtain uh, the depth average velocity. Using some math, uh, we can find the form to reconstruct the 3D profile from a depth uh, average velocity. This is our proto prototype uh, to be used uh, at the complete section. In the next session, I will discuss uh, the first application we have been studying. The first application is uh, a validation through comparison to an experiment conducted by Moriguchi and Kurotos in uh, 2009. It is a, um, a simple experiment in which some sand is released from a gate, flows on a flume, and then impacts against a barrier. We could simulate the experiment with, our, with uh, both depth uh, average and 3D model to simulate the phenomena in its entirety. This is because we are in a very controlled environment and a short flume. The results at the end of simulation in both the average and 3D models are pretty similar. But during the interaction, please focus on the central frame of the models. Um, the difference between the average and 3D models are significant. This is because the 3D model in the case of flow slash interaction, is much more realistic. Let's now move to our copper model. The copper model should study, uh, should study the flow slash interaction with a 3D model, and everything else should be studied with the depth average model. Therefore, uh, we split the flume into two subdomains. The first part of the domain the one next to the central laser, is simulated with the depth average model. The second part, where the flow starch interaction occurs, is simulated with the 3D model. It is possible to apply the MOI ideology in both frameworks with equivalent parameters. 
Therefore, we use a single set of parameters for both models. Finally, I can show you some results. Here, due to the length of the flume, uh, mm, no, big no big reduction of computational time can be really appreciated. But if you imagine a case like the one occurred in Swiss in 2005, the computational red uh, reduction would be massive. However, in this case, uh, we were able to make it work. The first national interaction is studied with the FTD model, while the release part is studied with the DepEdge model. Of course, this is uh, an undergoing work. Uh, we want to apply our approach to a much larger uh, scale application. However, we believe uh, both uh, that average and 3D models are powerful tools uh, which can study different aspects uh, of the risk flow. So a couple models can take advantages of both um, of the flaws of both models. Of course, the data is in the, is in the details uh, and some details uh, still need uh, some work. But we hope that in future, we will have a model that uh, optimizes uh, the computational time and how to design the initial structure rationally. Thank you for uh, your attention. If you have uh, any questions, I will be happy to, to answer. Here you can find uh, our contacts uh, and the reference we use to develop uh, our work. Thank you.